Hello all, I'm David Wiseman, the creator of DBA Dash. DBA Dash is a free open source monitoring tool for SQL Server. The purpose of this video is to give you an overview of the features and functionality of DBA Dash. You can then decide if the tool is right for your environment. I have another video covering the installation of DBA Dash that you might want to watch following this video. Let's get started with the demo. DBA Dash has three main use cases to monitor performance, support DBA checks, and to track configuration of your SQL Server instances. I'm going to start with DBA checks and finish with the most interesting part of the tool performance monitoring. DBA checks is the process of validating that your SQL Server instances are free of problems. For example, making sure that we have recent backups, agent jobs are not failing, and databases are free of corruption. Relying on alerts alone for this stuff isn't enough, as the absence of an alert isn't sufficient proof that everything is in a good state. The summary page here provides that validation. We can see that we have some items that need our attention. From the summary page, we can drill down to see the detail behind the summary data. I want to check on the last good check DB for the Dash 2019 instance. Here we can see that we've got recent DBC checks for all the databases except for tempdb. I'm going to click configure and exclude the tempdb database. I'm going to leave enabled uh, unchecked, click update. That tempdb database is now excluded. Click configure, inherit, update. The database is now included again. If you wanted to exclude tempdb from all your SQL instances, Click configure, uh, root threshold, and type in tempdb. Click update. Tempdb is now excluded from all of your SQL instances. Back to the summary page. You can see that that's now reporting in green for the 2019 instances. We can see that the tempdb database is excluded from other instances. But on the 2017 instance, we still need to configure DBCC checks. Similar configuration is also available for the other checks. What we can also do is click the checks in the tree. And then we can go and view the individual checks across all the SQL instances. In the filter drop down, we can click OK to include the checks that are in a good state. Here we can see all the drives across all of our SQL Server instances. Uh, there's also a table view uh, for when we've got a larger number of instances. Agent jobs, again there's a filter uh, to select the, the checks that are in a good state. Last good check DB, database files, DBA dash error log, collection dates, database space, uh, it's also possible to add custom checks and we have schema snapshots. The backups and high availability checks are in the HA DR folder. Here we can find backups, log shipping, mirroring and availability groups. Now we're going to look at configuration. Here we can see the configuration settings for all of our SQL Server instances. The ones highlighted here are the ones that we've changed from the default values. We can also filter just for the configured values. What the, the tool also does is track when uh, configuration settings have changed. So here we can see that we've recently changed max degree of parallelism from 4 to 8 for the Dash 2019 instance. Trace flags, we can see where we've got trace flags enabled uh, and when they were enabled. We've got a hardware tab where we can see the hardware information for our SQL Server instances and also when hardware changes have been made. Same again for SQL patching, uh, what versions of SQL Server we've got installed, the current product level and we can also see when changes have been made. See any alerts that have been set up, drivers, tempdb configuration. 
here we can see that we've got some issues highlighted where we don't have the recommended number of tempdb files for some of our sql server instances and there's also some recommended trace flags that we don't have enabled resource governor configuration database configuration database options query store and dba dash tags Tags can be used to filter your instances. There's various system tags that are created automatically and you can also uh, add your own custom tags. Now on to performance. You might want to start at the root level and click the performance summary. Here we can see a summary of the performance data for our SQL Server instances. We can see how busy the instances are in terms of CPU utilization, uh, disk I/O. Um, and we can also add some custom performance counters. At this level, we've also got slow queries, which is an extended event capture that captures any queries that take longer than a second to run by default. And we've also got a run and queries tab. Uh, this captures a snapshot of run and queries uh, by default, it takes a snapshot every one minute. We're going to go back to the performance summary and we're going to drill into performance for the Dash 2019 instance. Here we can see that we've got some uh, lock weights and we want to investigate this for this instance. The top chart in the performance tab gives us CPU utilization. We can see a breakdown of SQL Server process, CPU and uh, other CPU. The next chart down gives us disk I.O. We can see megabytes a second, IOPS and latency. Latency ideally should be a uh, single digit mil milliseconds. Uh, so you can see that the disk latency is good on this server. The third chart down shows us weight statistics. These are worth paying attention to. We can see some an interesting pattern of weights here where we, we suddenly see a spike in LCK MIX weights. Uh, any weight type beginning with LCK uh, is a locking weight and we, we can see that there's some, some blocking going on at regular intervals on this server. The, the fourth chart down is uh, it, it's based on the, the run and query snapshot. Uh, if there's any block sessions captured in the run and queries these will appear as bubbles on the chart. Uh, the bubbles higher up the chart indicates that there's more sessions blocked and the larger the bubble is, the, the higher the, the block wait time. What we can do with this chart, we can click on it and we can drill down and we can see um, what the, the root blocker was. We can click on the text and you can see uh, see what was uh, causing the blocking. In this case, there's a stop procedure called bad user transaction. What you can do from here, you can click on the block count to drill down to see the sessions that have been blocked by this. Uh, and again, you can drill down to see the sessions that are being blocked by, by session 76 as well. What you can also do, you can clear the blocking filter and then you can see all, all the sessions that were captured by this uh, run and query snapshot. Uh, it's easy to see the, the blocking hierarchy. Um, we can identify the queries that are blocked. Uh, any query listed here with a blocking session ID uh, that's not zero is being blocked by another session. Um, and we can also see the, uh, the the root blocker. So this session here is being blocked by session 53, uh, but session 53 in turn is being blocked by 70, 76. Uh, it's easy to identify the, the root blocker, uh, which in this case is uh, session ID 76. Um, the block count and recursive block count shows how, how many sessions are blocked behind this query. In this case, the root blocker only has one query block behind it, um, but then that query has another nine queries blocked behind, behind it. So we see the recursive block count of 10. You can sort by these. Uh, so this makes it very easy to see, um, to, to diagnose your blocking performance problems. Uh, and there's a, there's a whole wealth of information captured by these run and query snapshots. Um, the last chart 
uh, in the performance tab is um, it's sh shown object execution statistics. Uh, here you can see this is dominated by a random user update uh, and the bad user transaction. You can see the object execution data in more detail on the object execution tab. Here we can see a, a summary of the, the store procedures. We can click on a, a store procedure and we can see a, a chart of the performance over time. Here we can see average CPU, executions a minute and average duration. If you've got slow query capture enabled, we'll also have some interesting data in this slow queries here. Uh, this is based off an extended event uh, that by default captures any query that takes longer than a second to run. Um, you can drill down and view the, the individual queries uh, just by clicking on the link. Here we can see lots of random user updates and also the bad user transaction. Uh, what you can also do is uh, click on the session ID link. And this, what this does, it links the uh, slow query capture with the, the run and query data. Uh, so we can see the, the two snapshots uh, that, that are taken a, a minute apart captured for this uh, session. This can give you query plan information uh, weight and other data that we don't have captured with the, the slow query snapshot. If we go to the run and queries tab, we have run and query snapshots uh, created every minute. We can click to drill down and view a, a particular snapshot. Uh, and here we can see some, some blocking going in, uh, similar to what we'd seen before. Uh, the slow que the run and query snapshot uh, is very similar to tools such as SP who is active uh, and SP Blitz 2. We have a, a tab that captures summary data for weights uh, and you can also select a, a particular weight type and you can see the, the data for that weight type over time. Uh, so we can see a, a regular spike in the uh, LCK MIX weights. DBA Dash also captures OS performance counters. We can see these in the metrics tab. Uh, we can also see this data over time. It's also worth pointing out that the, the performance data that's listed by default was seen the, the last hour. Uh, but it's also possible to go back further in time. And we can view the click and we can enter a custom date range. The memory tab shows us how memory is being used on this uh, SQL instance. We can also click and view some uh, performance data for our SQL Server jobs. You can click Job Stats. We've got uh, two jobs that have been running in the selected time range, Bad Job and Random User Workload. We can click to view stats for an individual job and we can see how that job's performed over time. DBA Dash also has some Azure specific performance capabilities and other features not highlighted in this demo. DBA Dash is a free and open source tool and I hope you find it useful.